Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. Say amen. Come on, put your blessed hands together for God. Give him a hand. Try to say he is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy of all praise. Amen. Good morning and welcome to all those who are in here in person and those who are watching by Facebook Live. We are grateful to be in the house of God that we can gather together and worship our God in spirit and in truth. We come to give God praise this morning. I said we come to give God praise this morning. We come to give God praise this morning. We come to celebrate God for who he is, what he has done, what he is doing, what he is about to do in and through our lives. We come to give God praise this morning. So we welcome the Holy Spirit to anoint us that we might celebrate God in spirit and in truth. So let's bless God today as we worship him. I'm glad, glad to see the Deacon, Deacon uh, lives back with us. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We have some challenges here lately. We got some mothers who will be challenged physically, but God is still good. Yes, he is. Say God is still good. He's yes, still he a doctor. Is. Yes, he is. He's still a doctor. Yes. In the sick room, no yes. matter what comes up on it, he's still a doctor. So we come to celebrate God for who he is and what he has done. And that's why I love this, this, this one text in the Bible that says, when we come together, he tells us, oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Yeah. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us. And the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Come on in the And let's celebrate God on this wonderful day that he has celebrated, that he has given us on this day. And we're going to do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. sing it together and lift up the name of the Lord.
feel the praise. Enough, enough. It is responsive reading time. I need everybody to stand on their feet. We're going to the book of Psalms 23. And you know the protocol here. Pastor established that he will wait. But not long. He won't wait long. Amen? Amen. Amen. When you find it, just say, okay, I'm ready. 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 Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready. <laughs> okay. Here we go. And the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me into a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over and all together. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We have read Psalms 23 in its entirety. May the Lord have a blessing in the reading and the hearing and the doing of his most holy word. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Come on. 
on and praise him. This will be your last day. This will be your last yes, time. Lord, this will be God. your last moment. This will be your last second. Come, yes, Come on and praise him. Come on and praise the God from whom all blessings go. Come on and praise him. You ought to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank yes, you God. for another day's journey. Thank you for allowing my day to roll on. Just a little while longer. Yes, Thank God. you. Yes, God. church family. Thank you so much for celebrating me on my 95th birthday for being so awesome. Love always, Sister Luella Wheaton. Amen. And we did, we had a grand time celebrating her 95th birthday, so God, God is truly blessing. The other announcement that I have is this evening at 5 o'clock at the St. John Baptist Church, we will be starting our district association um, starting off with a musical at 5 o'clock. So if you're not busy this afternoon at 5, come by St. John. We have worked hard the last three days getting ready for the musical. So if you're not busy, come out and support um, our church and our district for the musical. Yes, These sir, are the announcements. One more, one more announcement. We will be having choir rehearsal on Saturday morning at 9 a.m. All choir members, please meet us at 9 o'clock. And new choir members. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we come to do what? God is good. At every Every day with Jesus. It's sweeter than the day before. And every day with Jesus. I love him more and more. Amen, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. We've been a praise morning this morning. And most of that night, we've been a praise morning because God is just good. Amen. He's just good. And he don't have to be good to me. Amen. Amen. He don't have to be good to you. But because he's good. I ought to be in a praise mode. Amen. Amen. God inhabits is the praises of his people. Amen and hallelujah. Well, good God, good, uh, good God bless you to y'all. Good to see everybody here again. It's good to see Dick Louse back. Let's pray for Sister, Sister Cato. She's down with pneumonia. And, 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 and there's all kind of stuff just going on and with, with our... Uh, with our uh, with, with 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 our members, Sister Irvin just heard had surgery uh, this this past week, and so she's she's down for the moment, but she she is in good spirits, and she will be back with us shortly. Yeah. So so we just gotta keep going on. These there's a leak in these old buildings. <laughs> Amen. The older you get, the more pains and aches, and you gonna find out. Amen. Amen. Just keep living. You ain't got there yet. Keep on living. Amen. It, it, it'll, it'll wake you up in the middle of the night. <laughs> you're going to get out of bed and you'll be like, uh-oh. <laughs> that back will kick in and be like, oh, mm. well, well, well. <laughs> Amen. I know I got some witnesses in the house. <laughs> Amen, amen. But God is still good, isn't he? Amen. He is still good. So we so we still we we still in love with God, and I'm sure glad God is still in love with us. Yes. Lord have mercy. Amen. 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 
Well, we we got we we, we gonna have a, a good month this month. We gonna be, the choir's gonna get back together. We gonna have a got new members coming. Amen. 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 We gonna we gonna have a great time in the name of the Lord. Good to see you, Sister Wheatley. Yeah. Ninety five years young. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So we still celebrate you. Amen. Amen. We still celebrate you. Cause some of us we may not make it. Amen. We may not make ninety five. But we take what we are, whatever God gives us. Amen. 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 Well, good, good to see you. We're not going to keep you long. We're going to just keep on pushing. And we're just going to have a great time celebrating the name of the Lord. So it is giving time. Amen. God's Amen. a little word that he gave us the best gift. Yes. He gave us the best gift. So now it's our time to give a little bit back to him. Come on, because.
not worthy, Father God, but we learned that you love us so much. You love us so much that you sent your own children. We thank you.
How many of you know that love will never lose its power? Never. never. The blood
gracious and all wise eternal God our Father in heaven the Bible says how excellent is thy name in all of the earth Father it is you we come to now because it is preaching time once again and as we stand to deliver your word from on high we ask God as always that you would help us to properly exegete, properly proclaim with clarity, with conviction, with power, with authority, your word. Give us a word, God, that's so strong that a bow down head will be lifted. Strength will replace weakness, joy will replace sorrow, hope will move despair out of the way. Give us a word, God, that will shine a light in a dark place in somebody's life. Give us a word, God, that will help us to keep running this race, keep fighting a good fight of faith. Give us a word, God, that will put a pep in our step, a glide in our stride, and a super in our natural. God, give us a word, God, that will help us to keep on keeping on in spite of obstacles, in spite of detours, in spite of whatever is that comes in our way. God, give us a word so that we can keep on doing your will and doing it your way. This is our prayer in the wonderful, matchless, most powerful name there is among men. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Now give, give God a hand praise for what he is about to tell you. Amen, amen, amen. Good God bless you. I'm not going to be up here but a few minutes. And so we're going to get right to the word of God, but we do hope that this word will be a of help and of strength to you. Yes, we Lord. started a new series last week entitled Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace. That's what we entitled this series, and that's what we're going to keep on in this second installment. It's found in Hebrews chapter 14, verse, I mean chapter 4, verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. If you would stand with me for the reading of God's word. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Amen. Thank God for allowing us to keep on singing, keep on praising, keep on worshiping Him, Amen. even on today. Thank, Thank God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. This is the second installment of this series, Amazing Grace. Last week we dealt with 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15 and verses 8 through 10. We dealt with God's, we dealt with grace and mercy was the first installment. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. If you have it, say amen. Amen. If you don't have it, tell me to wait. But y'all know my MO. I won't wait long. long. Wow. Hebrews. Chapter 4, verse 16. You, you should find it before James. And if I remember right, it's right after <laughs> somebody's book. <laughs> 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 uh, amen. 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 And, and I'm, I'm reading from the new, I'm, I'm reading from the new American Standard Version. New American Standard Version. It reads like this. Let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and may find grace to help in time of need. Let me read that one more time. Let us therefore that, 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 that's all of us. Let us therefore draw near with confidence to the throne of of grace yes, yes. that we may receive mercy yes. and find grace yes. to help in time of need. Amen. You may be seated Amen. in the presence of God and may God bless the reading and hearing of his holy and righteous word. Amen. For this second installment of this series, we want to talk about the throne of grace. Amen. Last week we talked about grace and mercy. But today we want to talk about the throne of grace. Y'all see it in the text? Mm -hmm. The throne of grace. Say it with me. The throne, the throne of, grace. of grace. Of grace. Amen. When you 
sit back and look at God and reflect on all the things that he has done. You will notice that God has given us many benefits. So God, God has poured on us and, and through us and to us many benefits. And those benefits come to us because we accepted his son Jesus as our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Part of the benefit package is forgiveness. Part of the benefit package is stability. Part of the benefit package is his constant presence. Part of the benefit package is his very present help. Part of the benefit package is his strength. Part of the benefit package is hope. Yeah. Part of the benefit package is light in darkness. Part of the benefit package is guidance. And I mean, I can go on and on and on and on. I can say he woke us up. Come on, somebody. This morning started us on our way. That's part of the benefit package. The heart still beating. That's part of the Benefit back, the blood still running warm in our veins. That's part of the benefit back that God has bestowed upon us. Many beneficial benefits. But one of the greatest benefits that God has given us is that we have access to the throne of grace. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, hallelujah. 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 We have access yes. to the throne of grace. All God's children, black folk, white folk, green folk, blue folk, orange folk, from America <laughs> to Asia to India to Iraq to Afghanistan, yes. all over this world, oh. Japan, China, everywhere you go, all children. Come on, somebody. Have access to the throne of grace. Yeah. And how do we access that throne of grace? It's through what we call prayer. All right, all right. As children of God, through prayer, we have the blessed opportunity to approach our Father in heaven. Mm -hmm. And guess what? When we go to him, when we approach this Throne of grace, we have the chance to communicate our needs, our desires, our love for Him, our thankfulness, our gratefulness. We 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 have the chance to offer questions that 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 we have no answer to. When we approach the throne of grace, we can voice our concerns. Lord, have mercy. All of us got concerned. We we can voice our frustrations to him, man. We can say to him whatever is on our mind when it comes to this life. Because we know this life is frustrating. It's aggravating. It's agitating. And it's showing up errors. Come on, somebody. Y'all know all of us got some tatings yeah. that bother us in this life, but we have access yeah. to the throne yeah. of yeah. grace. Yeah, yeah. Because we are his children. Yes. And he is our yeah. father. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm glad. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm glad, I'm glad. that we yeah. can go to him. In prayer and share with him everything that's on our minds and everything that's bothering us and whoever is bothering us and however they are bothering us, we can go to the Lord together. In prayer. But also, we have access to hear what the Father has to say. Yes, Lord. See, too many times we do too much talking while we're at the throne. Of grace. 
But when we go to the throne of grace, we all take time to listen to him. There have been many questions that have been answered, but we wouldn't shut up. All right, so all we right. didn't get the answer. Many times we went to God for healing, but we wouldn't shut up, so we didn't get it. Come on, somebody. All right, go ahead. Well, the, the, the healing. We, God, God has resolved a lot of problems, but we wouldn't shut up, so we didn't get mm. the solution to the problem. But, right. but, but I, I come to tell you this morning, when you go to the throne of grace yeah. from this point on, don't do all the talking. All right, all right. All right. Sit there and listen to what God has to say. If you, if you ask the question, see if he'll answer it right then. Yes. If you need a solution, sit right there and see if he'll give you yes, he will. the solution to that. Oh, Probably. It may not happen at that point, but you ought to still give him a chance to talk. Amen. Because what good is to be married and one person only does the well, what good it is to be partners, but only one person does all the talking, all the decisions. All right, all right. Care if you head of the house, don't care if you head of the church, you still all of them. Take time to listen to one another. They may know something that you don't know. That's right. All right, all right. They may have an answer that you've been searching for. Hush up! <laughs> and let the other person do some talking, especially when it comes to our Father yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. in Him, because He's got some things on His mind that He wants to share with us. He's got some answers to some of your questions that He wants to share with you. So therefore, when you go to the throne of grace, remember that it is a benefit to approach the throne. The key word is approach. All right, all right. When you approach this, 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 this beautiful throne of, a, of, a, of, a, of the grace of our God in him. Yes. When we take a look at this text historically and take a look back historically at the most ancient rulers or kings who had sat on the throne all the years that God had appointed them. Many times those kings, those rulers were very unapproachable. Mm -hmm. yeah. They were unapproachable by the so-called common people. See, and, 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 and it's sad to say that there are some pastors who are unapproachable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to sit on the throne of the pulpit, but the people can't. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nobody's that important. Nobody. Nobody needs an entourage protecting you from the folk. Why are you over them? If you're unapproachable. All right. The, 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 the kings and the rulers back in the day were who sat on their throne were unapproachable by the so-called common people, those who seemingly were unimportant. All right, say that. Some would not even allow the highest ranking officials to come before them without permission. Why do I need to give my wife permission to come to me? Mm. If she got to get permission, she, she, she ain't going to be bothered. Amen. She's been gone a long time ago. Hello, somebody. Well. But some of those kings, they would not even let the highest ranking officials come before them without permission. How do I know? Because Queen Esther, y'all know the story risked her own life in approaching her husband, King Ahasuerus, without an invitation. Right. Even though she was his wife, she had to get permission mm -hmm. to approach his throne in his kingdom. But watch this. But the, the penitent person, one who no, no, no matter how sinful, how unworthy, how undeserving one may be, can approach God the Father at yes. his throne of grace at any day, any second, any yes. moment, at any time that he or she needs. 
to. Hallelujah. We can go to God and pray anytime we want. It can be early in the morning. It can be in the noonday hour. It can be in the midnight hour. It can be in the evening when the dust is turning about to go to go to nighttime. Whatever time you need to go to God, He will allow you to approach Him for, for, for forgiveness or salvation. And guess what? You can do it with confidence. You can go to God with confidence that He will and that we will receive His mercy as well as His grace. How can we do that? Because by Christ's sacrifice, the sacrifice of himself, God's throne, which was only a throne of judgment, has now been turned into a throne of grace for those who trust and believe in him. All right, all right. You see, back in the day, the, the, the Jewish high priest, once a year for centuries, had to sprinkle blood on the mercy seat for the people's sin. But when Jesus came, Lord have mm. mercy, hallelujah. hallelujah. When Jesus came, yeah. Jesus shed his blood once and for all time yeah, yeah. for the sins of everyone who believes and put their trust in him. Yeah. That is his perfect provision. The Bible here speaks much about God and his justice. Y'all know God is a God of justice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y'all do know he is a God yeah. of justice. Yeah. But how terrible would it be for us if God was only a God of justice? Well, How bad would it be for you and me if God only dealt with us by being a just God? Mm. But I'm here to come to you this morning. Right. That not only is a God of he is a God of just, yes, but he's also a God who is very gracious. <laughs> yes. I said he is a very gracious God. Yes, See, as sinful men and women, we deserve death. We we deserve the, the verdict and the sentence of justice in, in the light, in the courtroom of life. But God knew that you and I needed salvation, which comes through the gift of his grace. Mm -hmm. And so it is to the very throne of grace that any person can now come with confidence and assurance before him. That's why the writer in this text says, let us draw near, come on somebody, with confidence to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and may find grace to, to help in time of need. In other words, no matter how bad you are, you can come in confidence with God. No matter what you ever have done, you can come in confidence to, to, to God. No matter how bad you think what you've done is, has been done, you can still come to God with confidence and assurance that you will receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And so the question comes to mind. Why is God's throne called the throne of grace? Well, I got two helpful holy hints for you today. And then I'm going to move out the way and let us get to communion. First of all, God's grace is called, uh, his throne is called the throne of grace is because God's grace is dispensed there. I said God's grace is right. dispensed all right. All right. there. In other words, it is given out there. Grace comes from God who sits high on his throne. You, you all know what I'm talking about. Watch this. At, at work and at, at school places and businesses and other venues, you have what is called vending machines. They're all over the place. You all know what a vending machine is. A vending machine is, is a machine that dispenses things like gum and chips and cookies and drinks and candy bars and other items when you 
uh, put money into the machine and then get what you want as long as you have put in enough money to get whatever it is that you are trying to get. Y'all know you drop money in, you put A1 and get some chips, and you put B, B2 and you get some cookies, B3 and you, 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 you got some Cheetos or whatever the case may be. You put your money in to get, hello somebody, what you want to get out of the machine. Now, but watch this. Watch this. God is almost like a vending machine. All see, right, see, right. see. God dispenses like a vending machine dispenses to us. God dispenses to us like a vending machine. But watch this. We get to choose what we want from the vending machine, but we don't get to choose say it, say it. what we want from God. God does the choosing of, of, of what he thinks that and he believes that we need at the time that we need. Yeah. Hello, somebody. We, 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 when we approach God, we don't have to have no money either. Well, you don't, you, don't have, you don't have to pull out your bill for Yeah, yeah. And, and now they got it where you can swipe your card and, 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 and take all your money. Yeah, if you don't have none of this, you pull out your card and, and spend your money and to, to get what you want. But when you go to God, you don't have to have no money yeah. to get what he has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just have to approach the throne of grace. And, and when he decides what we, we need, that's what we will get when he decides when we need it. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. You and I, we, we don't deserve it. But at the throne of grace, yeah. God dispenses his grace. And, 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 and what I love about God, no matter what we do, he dispenses his grace upon us. When we lie, mm. he dispenses. Well, come on, somebody. His grace. Yeah. When we go to the throne of grace and when we gossip, he dispenses his grace. When we cheat, he dispenses his. Come on, somebody. His grace. When we cuss and fuck, he dispenses his grace. When our attitude is jacked up and messed up and tied up, taken up, God dispenses. Yeah, come yeah, on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. His grace. When our prayer life is weak, God dispenses his grace. He gives grace when our yes becomes no and our no becomes. He gives grace when our eyes roam where they ought not be. When our hands take our, uh, when our feet take us to, to, to unprohibited ground where we ought not be. And when our hands touch what we ought not be touching, God dispenses. Yes. Yes. When we go to his throne, God dispenses. Come on, somebody. His grace. He dispenses his grace when we're supposed to go left, but we go right. He dispenses his grace when we go right, when we're supposed to go left. God dispenses his grace when we yield to temptation. God dispenses his grace when we break the law. God dispenses his grace when we become lazy. God dispenses his grace when we misuse and abuse. God dispenses his grace when we are unfaithful. God dispenses his grace when we don't read or study his word, when we don't follow his precepts. God dispenses his grace. Yes. Yes. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad when you go to the Lord in prayer? He dispenses. Yes, he does. There's the answer. <laughs> That's grace. Here's the solution. That's grace. When you go to the throne of grace, God dispenses his grace. And then secondly, and finally, not only is God's throne a throne of grace because he dispenses his grace, but God knows when and how much grace to dispense. Y'all yes. right. get that? Yes. God knows when and how much grace to dispense. See, sometimes when we go to vending machines, we know good and well we don't need two bag of chips and cookies mm. and a pop. We, we know we don't need all that, all those five, six hundred thousand calories that we are about to get, but because we say we're hungry, all right. but because we are greedy, we get more, come on somebody, right. than we ought to, we get more than we need. 
Oh, I got an extra dollar. And then here comes another bag. And then if a bag gets hung up, we over there. <laughs> Kicking the machine. We try we try to get them chips. We, we, uh, we don't want nobody coming by and get the same thing. They get both bags. We're trying to get what we want to get when we need to get it. But with God, right. when you go to the throne of grace, he knows when and how much grace to dispense. Yeah. Although everything is dispensed from the throne of grace, God knows what we need yes, at exactly yes. the right time yes. when we need it. God knows each and every one of us have certain tastes, certain needs. And see, some of you all like popcorn, some of y'all don't. Some of you like Cheetos, some of you rather have plain chips. Some of you rather have a Snickers versus a Hershey bar. You know, you 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 pick and choose what you what you like to have. You you got certain styles, certain ch- uh, taste, and that's what's and that's what makes it good about a marriage because. Each person has a certain taste, certain style. Some might put one, one, the woman might want scramble, the man might want fried. easy over fried, whatever the case may be. One might want grilled pork chops versus fried pork chops. Come on, somebody. Right. Some of them want grilled chicken versus barbecue chicken. Yeah. I mean, everybody's got their own taste. But when it comes to God, All right. when it comes to God, Whatever the need is, God will meet it, and, and, and He will dispense it. And, and, and He knows that 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 one person might need forgiveness at this point, but another person might just need some hope. Come on, somebody! God knows when, He knows how, and how much we need at the right time we need it. And so when you approach the throne of grace. God dispenses what we need exactly at the time we need it. He he dispenses forgiveness. He dispenses peace. He dispenses comfort. He dispenses money. Hello, somebody. He dispenses healing. He dispenses strength. Anybody with me on your street yet? He dispenses direction. He dispenses joy. He dispenses help. He dispenses a way out of no way. He dispenses life and life more abundantly. He dispenses a new job. He dispenses bill paid. He dispenses a pay raise. He dispenses a new car. He dispenses a new house. He dispenses food on the table. Clothes on the back. Shoes on the feet. I'm just talking about what God dispenses. He dispenses water in dry places. He dispenses rest. To the weary, he yeah. dispenses light in darkness. He dispenses shelter in the time of storm. He dispenses a doctor in the sick room, a lawyer in a courtroom. He dispenses a very present help in time of trouble. Whatever you need is all I'm trying to say. God's got it huh? when we need it. Huh? Good God Almighty, help! Huh? God sent His help when we need it. Huh? Love God places people within us who will love us with all of our flaws, all of our mess up, all of our hang up. And speaking of hang up, over 2,000, over 2,000 years ago, because of our hang ups, we had a Savior who came down through 40 and two generations so that he could hang up for our hang ups. He could be hung up for our hang up. That's the proper way of saying it. And Jesus provided a way back to God in heaven. The Bible says he sacrificed his life for my life and yours. He took my sins and your sins and became the fall guy. In other words, he took the blame for my lies. He took the blame for my cheating. He took the blame for my stupidity. He took the blame for my ignorance. He took the blame for my feet going the wrong way. He took the blame for my hands touching that which I should not have. Come on, somebody. Don't act like I'm the only one in here. He took the blame for whatever you did. For whatever you said and whatever attitude you may have had, he took, I said he took, the 
the blame for everything that you and I did that goes against his will and goes against his way. He died. I said he died. Yeah. He died out on Calvary. He took the penalty for sin. And you know the penalty of sin is death. He died about Calvary's death out on Calvary on Golgotha's hill. Y'all know Calvary. Calvary, the place that sin was paid for. Calvary, the place that death brought life. Say Calvary. Calvary, the place where we were washed in the blood of the Lamb. Calvary, the place where the sun refused to shine. Say Calvary. Calvary, where the place where the moon had a cerebral hemorrhage. Say Calvary. Calvary, where the place where the storm raged. Say Calvary. Calvary. Oh, the place huh, where lightning did it zigzag across the sky. Huh, say Calvary. Calvary. Calvary, the place huh, where Jesus hung, huh, bled, huh, and died huh, for you and me. Huh, he died. Huh, I say he died. Huh, he died huh, for you. Huh, he died huh, for me. Huh, after he died, huh, y'all know what we do huh, when somebody dies. Huh, we take them huh, to Crown Hill. Huh, we take them, huh? Oh, good God Almighty, huh? The green acres are wherever it is, huh? We're gonna take them while we burn them, huh? Good God Almighty, huh? Into the ashes, huh? But whatever you do, they get buried, huh? Either in the earth, huh? Or they get buried, huh? Either in the ground, huh? Where Jesus, huh? Was buried, huh? In a tomb, huh? He didn't own the tomb, he just barred it, huh? For a couple of days, huh? Cause he knew when you borrow something, huh? You're supposed to. I said, you supposed to. Yeah. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You supposed to. Yeah. When you borrow money, you supposed to. back. Come on, somebody. When you borrow the car, bring it back. Bring it back with the same amount. Yes. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Sound like I got some parents up here in the Houdini with some chip. When you borrow stuff, you supposed to either pay it back, bring it back, yeah. Yeah. or even bring it back better with Jesus. Yeah was just barn because it was a new grade and he knew that he wouldn't mess it up and he knew that a couple of days that he was going to give it right back. Friday, he's in the grave. Friday evening, he's in the grave. Saturday morning, he's still in the grave. Saturday evening, He's still in the grave. But the Bible says when you turn the page that early Sunday morning before the dew drops hit the ground early Sunday morning before the rooster could go cock a doodle doo early Sunday morning before the sun could meet the eastern horizon Jesus, Mary's little baby. Jesus, John, Jamie, Jew's big brother. Jesus, Abraham's friend. Moses, burning bush. This same Jesus, good God Almighty, got up. I said, got up. Matter of fact, the Bible says he rose with all power in heaven and in heaven. Come on, somebody. In earth and that's why I like the songwriter who said, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I may have bills, but I can face tomorrow. I may be catching hell, but guess what? I can face tomorrow. I may have to walk where I gotta go, but I can face tomorrow. I may have trouble on this side. I may have trouble on that side, but because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Why? Because I know he holds the future. And life no matter how bad it gets. And life, yeah. no matter how many problems I got. And life is worth the living. 
just because uh, he lives. He lives. I said he lives. How do I know? Because he walks <laughs> with me. He talks <laughs> with me. He tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tear it there. None other. I said none other. None other. None other has ever known. But because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I have the chance and the opportunity to approach the throne of grace. Because grace is dispensed there. And God knows how much we need when we need dispensed to us was his son Jesus. And his son Jesus dispensed his life so that we might have a right to eternal life. 
and what he did is what we are about to celebrate now. He gave up his body, and then he gave up his blood, so that by the shedding of his blood, there is no, without the shedding of his blood, there is no remission of sin. We have been washed, watch this, in the laundry room of God. Not with tithe, not with gain, but with the blood of Jesus. We have been washed clean. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God looks at us, he sees no spots. He sees no dirt. He sees no grind. But he sees the blood of Jesus Christ. Aren't you happy? Yeah. Aren't you happy? Yeah. Even though you may have sinned this morning, when God looks at us, yeah. Yeah. hallelujah, yes. 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 he yeah. sees us washed in the blood of the Lamb. So let's celebrate as we do the Holy Communion and celebrate what Jesus did. Deacon, allow to go to and the Deacon Irvin will lead us to the throne of grace. This morning's scripture reading will be found in Luke, the 22nd chapter, starting the 14th verse down to the 20th verse. It says, Now when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With frame of desire, I have desire to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. I read Luke, the uh, 22nd chapter, verses 14 to 20. The Lord bless the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. 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 Thank you, Almighty God, for being such a great good God. Yes, God. There's all the opportunity that there was last in my life. And for a take of this Lord's suffering. And give him to our hearts, strength, and lead us for this day's safety. God, they ain't wrong. We got any hurt? Body, soul, well, heal this right, right now. Yes, yeah. Lord. Do our words. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, mighty way, Father, we might continue to eat. And eat until we make that home and make it home and in this Lord Jesus. Bless us in the mighty way, Father, that we will take it. So that we sick, we'll be healed and be We hurt all the hurt and pain of you. Oh, yes, Lord. Right now.
supper that represents his body and his shed blood. We will first go to God in prayer, silent prayer, and ask God for forgiveness as we prepare to celebrate what Jesus did for us. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Lord, we pray and ask, amen. On the night that Jesus was arrested, he took the bread, broke it, and gave thanks and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Once they had supper, he took the drink and said, Drink ye all of it. And once they had drank and supped, they went out into the Mount of Olives and sang a hymn. But we know, I know, it was the blood that was shed for you and for me. Come on and stand as we prepare to go home.